Hello guys, good evening. Uh, I am Dr. Shekhar Tiwari and it has been a long time since I came up with a new video for you. And as we all know, the date for the upcoming FMG exam has been finalized. And uh, this is going to be the June 2023 session which is going to be held on 30th July. So it's time for all the upcoming FMG warriors to fasten your seat belts and you know uh, pace up your preparation. So as we had a really good response for the MIT episode one, this is MIT episode two for you. And this video consists of important topics for ENT, ophthalmology, PSM, FSM, and pediatrics. So guys, these four subjects, you know, they make up for the scoring part of the paper 2 exam. This is my personal experience. I did not do well. I could not do well in paper 2 because I always lacked in uh, surgery, medicine and OT type. Not that I had not read my content nicely. It's just that way the examiners are making questions nowadays it's very tricky and you might have read the reviews of all the faculties for the January FLG exam everyone kept saying that paper 2 was of a really difficult level the surgery surgery consist, consisted of I think 38 questions in January exam and uh, some many of the faculties kept saying that around 20 to 25 out of those 38 questions were of so you know super specialty level so yeah uh, I'm, I'm sure if you are an average student just like me you might also struggle to you know score well in the paper too so if you go through these topics while revising your content i'm sure uh, these four subjects will make up around 55 questions of your paper too and if you go through these topics very revised, I'm sure you're going to score more than 45. So if you're scoring 50, around 50 in your paper too, from just these four subjects, uh, it's very easy for you to score that 80%, 80 marks in your paper two exam. And uh, as I mentioned in my you know tips and tricks for the upcoming FMG exam, if you are able to score you know around 90 to 100, that's a sweet spot for paper one. No power in the world can stop you from passing the upcoming exam. So, without wasting any more time, let's just dive right into it. Uh, most important topics for ENT, ophthalmology, FSM, and pediatrics. So, when we talk about ENT, malignant otitis external. This has been the examiner's favorite. The question is: uh, It's an elderly male who has, you know, who, who is a diabetic, and there is. Uh, pus formation, pain in the ear, ear discharge. So, if you see a question like this, your answer should already be malignant or digestive. There's no way there's going to be a different answer. Next up is otosclerosis, linear disease, vestibular schwannoma, hearing implants, uh, carcinoma maxilla, CSF rhinorrhea. CSF rhinorrhea, it's a indicated question, it also comes in surgery. So make sure you read both of them together. Uh, nasal polyp, juvenile nasal, nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, J J N A. This is also the examiner's favorite. There's going to be a case of a young boy with a axis. So your answer should be J N A. And then your nasopharyngeal carcinoma, membranous tonsillitis, tonsillectomy, vocal fold palsies, uh, juvenile papillomatosis, carcinoma larynx, tracheostomy, tracheostomy. Talking about ophthalmology, now ophthalmology was kind of tricky for me, if you do your image as well and if you have done two revisions, I'm sure you're going to you know, uh, make all the questions correct. So lacrimal apparatus, your congenital, congenital NAD obstruction, probing, syringing, what, what management for what age group, that's very important, cataract, its classifications, its various surgeries, pacoemulsification, post-op complex, everything. Glaucoma, the open angle versus closed angle glaucoma, anti glaucoma drugs. You should read this in Ofta and in Pharma together. Integrate your revisions. And the anti glaucoma drugs has been examiner's favorite. They always ask one or two questions from this topic. Visual field defects, your you know, pie in the sky, 
biotemporal, I mean UPI, everything, secondary glaucoma, very important. Next up is uveitis. Uh, talking about uveitis, you should read, read about anterior uveitis, intermediate and post ophthalmitis, ophthalmitis, refractive errors, your myopia, hypermetropia, astigmatism. These are, you know, give away questions. You should be making them correct no matter what. Retina, the retinal detachment, diabetic retinopathy, its risk factors, pathophysiology, your non proliferative versus proliferative diabetic retinopathy, vitreous image, the CRVO and CRAO, the matoslash appearance, everything. It's very important, it's very basic giveaway. You should be doing this correct any time of the day. Your cystic macular edema, its causes, retinitis pigmentosa, your age related macular degeneration, retinoblastoma. Retinoblastoma is also been examiner's favorite. There, this particular image of a child, poor child with the, you know the retinoblastoma. So, yeah, you read about its gene mutation, everything, the image, how it looks. Neuroophthalmology. This is up and coming topic. They usually they did not used to ask more much, much questions on this topic, but now this they do. So make sure you read about optic neuritis, papilledema, visual pathways, squint. Its classification, different types of paralytic squints, the cranial nerve 3, cranial nerve 4, cranial nerve 6 palsies, everything, conjunctivitis, xerophthalmia, uh, classification of vitamin A deficiency, pterygium, trachoma, the safe strategy, clinical features, the vision 2020 program, which one is not included for India, everything, spring catara, uh, your VKC, read about it, go through the images, go through the history. It's very easy and you should you should be making these questions correct. Cornea, the corneal ulcers, refractive surgeries, uh, Munson sign, Fleischer sign. Fleischer sign is different from the Kieser Fleischer sign which is seen in Wilson's disease. Make note of that. Ocular trauma, everything. Talking about FSM, FSM, see, uh, it does not have a lot of theory. I think if you go through any notes, 90 pages to 100 pages, that's it. For me, I followed uh, Dr. Chamard's notes for FSM and I think that's gold standard. You can follow any notes that you are comfortable with, any source, but just make sure you do proper and enough revisions. So talking about FSM, in traumatology they usually ask you about abrasion and bruise, mechanical injuries, the incision, the difference between incision and laceration, types of skull vault fractures, intracranial hemorrhage. This question is asked in integration to surgery, so make sure you read them together. Also burns, what are the signs of anti-mortem burn, what is the sign of post-mortem burn and then estimation of the body surface area of a burn patient. This is also, uh, you should read in conjunction to surgery. And uh, forensic ballistics, the gunpowder, discharge, range, in legal sections you should be reading about I IPC sections of criminal abortions, hurt versus previous hurt, sexual offences, every sexual offence offense, and also about the, you know, uh, Illegal abortion of the girl child, you should read about that. Police versus magistrate inquest, dying declaration, cognizable offense versus non cognizable offense, medical negligence, very important. Talking about asphyxia, then you should read about hanging versus ligature, strangulation, suffocation, burking, dry versus wet drowning. In thanatology, you should read about algal mortis, liver mortis, rigor mortis, the Nishtens rule, it's very important for rigor mortis, order of putrefaction, Casper's victim. These are you know examiner's favorite topic talking about thanatology. Now when we talk about human identification, you should be you know very thorough with the cephalic index of all the races and then the rule of actually for sex determination, dactylography, which is study of you know fingerprints, which one is the most common fingerprint, the images of the different kinds of fingerprints, and rule of HACI for age determination, the stuff sense criteria. These are you know important topics for human identification. In sexual jurisprudence, you should read all the definitions, the updated MTP Act, tests for life one, you know, the life birth. There is, I think, Gettler's test and several other tests. You should read about those, all the paraphilias and tests for blood stain and semen stain. In forensic toxicology, you should read about diagnosis of the poisoning based on smell, color, and chemical analysis. Now, there is a contraindication for gastric lavage. You should read about that. And then you should read about uh, corrosives, irritants, cardiotoxic uh, substance which is aconite, asphyxiant which is carbon monoxide and cyanide. And in miscellaneous, you should go through images of snakes, how a particular snake looks like, uh, 
the category of the the classification of the poison of the snake if it's uh, you know uh, cardiotoxic neurotoxic myotoxic like that pediatrics now pediatrics many people take pediatrics lightly they keep it until last or they do not read it but i want you to read your pediatrics and revise it as long uh, along with internal medicine and uh, talking about pediatrics uh, in general pediatrics you should go through anthropometric parameters developmental milestones changes during puberty this is very important topic in the national immunization schedule and then you should read about breast milk its composition when what times it is contraindicated about colostrum uh, there is a topic breast milk versus cow milk go through that they ask you many questions and then you know they they try to uh, trap you with uh, confusing options so make sure your concepts are strong here uh, also in genetics you should read about down syndrome turner newnans edwards what are fragile x because you know these are straight they will give away if you make mistakes here uh, how will you you know cover up in those long as uh, surgery and internal medicine questions those will you know really mess with your mind when you are in the examination hall and then you should read about kawasaki disease versus scarlet fever and then also about the henox online purpura kaushal kor versus marasmus in neonatology you should read about feeding of preterm units what kind of feeding is to be done you know the spoon and paradigm feeding uh, everything uh, neonatal resuscitation guideline that that is an important topic you should read about neonatal jaundice the physiological versus pathological jaundice apgar scoring neonatal hypothermia these are you know important topics in neonatology in systemic pediatrics you should read about first infections starting with varicella rubella measles erythema infectiosum the fifth disease you know mumps and everything you should read about their incubation period their clinical features there is no period of infectivity everything in cardiology you should read about congenital heart diseases cyanotic or severe cyanotic heart diseases in gi you should read about management of diarrhea there is a particular diarrhea management guideline you should go through it thoroughly in respiratory you should read about crew epiglottitis bronchiectasis also and community acquired pneumonia that's uh, you know examiner's favorite in pediatrics uh in kidney you should read about psg and hemolytic uremic syndrome for musculoskeletal you should go through the cats scurvy oxygen is imperfect now that's a very clinical question very basic question examiner's favorite i don't know why but they ask this question in every particular fungi exam so make sure you don't you know make a mistake here uh and in endo, endo you should read about congenital hypothyroidism and in neuro you should read about epilepsy meningitis neurocutaneous syndromes like you know your tuberous sclerosis your coat white stain that one. everything you should go through that nicely so this was mit episode 2 for you uh, i will make sure i come up with a third episode in within a week i will not take long and uh, see uh, i will show you the time check it's 2 2:30 am right now in the morning i had some free time on me so i prepared the ppt you know, for you and then i started shooting this video during my you know night shift in a private hospital so yeah uh, this was it uh, last thing i want to conclude with say to you before i conclude this video is that the time has passed now you only have 70 days in your hands and you know if you haven't even started your preparation yet it is still doable just make sure you read for 8 to 10 hours you don't waste time on social media you utilize your break properly nicely go through the you know uh, strategy video which my brother just uploaded i think it's been 2 or 3 days go through it uh, i'm sure it's going to be of some value to you and uh, all i want for my friends and my juniors and whoever who is watching this video is for you to pass your fmg exam because see your exam has been delayed a lot and until a few days ago we had no idea about your exam if it's going to happen what will be the date what's going on so and nmc these days it's they are you know very unpredictable they come up with new news any time new updates any time and we don't have any option but to follow it so take this fmg as a last fmg exam because it might as well be your last fmg exam 
they can come up with the next exam anytime. Uh, so take this as an opportunity for you to prove your haters wrong, to you know make work of your parents' sacrifices, to put smile on your parents' faces and to make a doctor out of yourself. Because now you have been graduated already, all you have left is to pass this final hurdle and then you will be you know one of the people in this noble profession of ours. So that was all from my side. I hope this was of some value to you. Uh, and this PPT will be uploaded in our Telegram channel. If you haven't joined it, make sure you join. And uh, that was it from me. Thank you for your time. Have a good one. Uh, revise nicely. And uh, just, you know, keep fighting. You got this. I believe in you. Have a good one.